<clears throat> so, I have been sick most of the week, and today feel amazing. Able to go back to school and teach and actually, like, breathe and sing and do things. It was great. Come on, Basil. This juice is uh, mint, cucumber, and basil. And I've added some club soda to it. And... Perfect. Okay, so what I have here is actually a piece that I had already... Ooh, nope. That's the highest I can go. Um, there we go. Uh, something that I've already written, and actually I think I've posted on my website in one of the music blogs. Um, it is a work that is... Um, not, I think, it, well, it's Sonata Allegro in the process of becoming Sonata Allegro form. Um, it has two themes, uh, kind of a faster and a slow theme, and then I basically end in this developmental fugue thing. And that's what I've got written. Um, and we're going to take a look at this first and play through it. I'm just going to leave it off to the side here because I don't feel like um, messing with this beautiful thing that I've already, excuse me, I just finished eating in the last minute or so. That's why I said five minutes, because um, I hadn't even started eating. Uh, this thing, and it's so perfect in lining up that I, I don't want to mess with it. So I'm going to play through it <coughs> and see where I'm starting at. And basically, I am going to orchestrate what I've got here and then build on to it because this first theme does not last not like nearly long enough. Um, it kind of just abruptly ends. And then so I'm gonna expand upon that and then I'm going to put in the second theme. Then I need to start some development. And yeah. Here we go.
Okay. <clears throat> so there's that little fugue thing at the end. Um, you can see kind of the abrupt where right before um, there's like the quarter rest and then three completely unison quarter notes and the whole thing. That's kind of the second theme. Um, and then there's another kind of abrupt transition to this developmental fugue. Uh, but I don't know that I like a whole lot because I, it was more because I really want to practice writing fugues. Um, and, you know, writing a four-part fugue might not be the best place to start, but it's not the worst place to start. Worst place to start probably be a six-part fugue or an eight-part fugue. Or just writing a fugue could be the worst part. Um, I'm going to do one little thing here so that I can just do one um, page that I'm looking at. Uh, there we go. So now I can look at the YouTube and the finale at the same time, since I don't plan on doing anything other than being in the finale sphere. So my editor can just, the program could just go away. Of course, you can't really see my hands too much, because I just did it. You can see a little bit. I just, there we go, yep. You can see some of it. Maybe I should do this. That'll help. <clears throat> anyway, so the goal is get that into this. Now let's talk about this. So this is currently in scroll view. I have titled this as Overture for Bursting City. Um, because it gives me that kind of, like, yeah, let's go, uh, vibe. I don't know. Anyway, so I have got this for a pretty standard orchestra setup. Um, the exception being that I did include a contrabassoon part because I love contrabassoon. Even though, very rarely do you actually have a contrabassoon access to many orchestras. Um, so everything else, though, is pretty standard. I left it at two horn lines because I'm going to do a horn one and three, horn two and four kind of deal. Um, so I just slammed on my keyboard here. Um, so there's that. Ooh, I am hot. Wow, I just looked at that, and I'm going to turn myself down. There we go. The other thing is I left my mouse at school and at work. So there's going to be a lot of me hitting the keyboard, the touchpad, and frustrated that I can't do shortcuts because why let the laptop users be able to find some kind of keyboard way to do some of these shortcuts? Make me make music. You're killing me. Okay, so I've got three trumpet parts though. Um, I'm using B-flat trumpets because I feel that uh, it's more readily available for non-professional community orchestra kind of setting. And I want to be, I, I mean, I know I included the contrabassoon part, but it's not going to be by me all means it, uh, important and necessary. I just want it. Um, I've got two trombone and a bass trombone part, uh, tuba part, and then timpani, percussion, harp. Uh, there's a piano part in here that may turn into mount percussion, or it may stay piano, or maybe I'll make it organ. Uh, then it probably wouldn't be accessible, but gotta love when there's an organ in an orchestra score. Um, and then we've got our string parts at the bottom, where they should be. Um, so they're all grouped together, not because the woodwind parts should be at the top. And it makes me feel more at home because it's a band score. No, uh, this is your standard orchestra uh, setup here for our score. And so it does make quite a long scroll. And you can see Finale glitching a little bit as I try to do this. Um, <clears throat> but thanks to technology, we have the concert pitch option. So I don't have to really transpose even though none of these transpositions are difficult. Um, and um, I played viola 
So I'm fine with the alto clef. Without further ado, let's get to some orchestrating. So I have here this D, 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 D in almost unison. I kind of really want to leave this mostly taking care of the strings. Um, I just think going down, up, up, down, up, down, up is kind of the effect, the way I want to go. D, 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 Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I could copy and paste. But I think I'm going to just put it once in the violin. All right, we have to sit here for all these. So I'll just talk. Um, I'm going to put it once in the violin and then copy paste from the violin. And then I'll just use the shift down shortcut to put it in the correct ranges. However, with the most version, most recent versions of Finale, it'll actually auto transpose within the correct octave most of the time. All right, I don't have to worry about tap space because I'm not using those um, like I would for a marching band file. Um, oh, it's not doing anything because I haven't. There we go. Now it'll do stuff. Um, but I'm just going to do it in that octave so I can just do this. And then I'm going to hit, oh, not eight, nine. I promise I don't have any finale. Um, and voila. I've got it. Um, I am going to do a little more than that, though. Um, because I actually do not want the bases down in the... Actually, is it going to do what I think it's going to do? Yeah. Okay. So no, I've got the bases exactly where I want them. Um, now the question is, do I want to split the cellos? And the answer is no. I think I'm going to leave the cellos where they're at. That way, um, they're not doing an open string. Because why would I let them use an open string for the first note? <laughs> Um, and while we're here, I'm not going to put in the bowing just yet, because then if I end up not leaving this in just the strings, I can copy and paste and not have to delete the bowings out of the copy paste, even though it would take just as long as when I go to put them in anyway. But, um, so I'm going to do this. So violin one and contrabass are going to double this B flat, except they are not going to do a double, not a double, a, a dotted half. Um, they're going to follow my beautiful bass line. G flat, G flat, G sharp. A, A, um, they, however, are going to do a dotted quarter. Actually, what I might do is just give them the B flat as an eighth note, leave them off and use the woodwinds on the d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d and then bring the violins back in on the ascending eighth note pattern here so i've got this i've got e flat g flat to d flat and you can kind of see here, I guess I'll use the mouse. Um, but I've got an E flat accidental in the second layer, and Finale does transfer accidentals between layers. 
So that means that this is actually an E flat. So I'm going from, I'm basically doing this D flat major thing in this measure here. And then we're going to go ahead and E flat, D flat, A flat, G flat, C, B flat, still A flat, G flat. Do, 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 do. That's not an C, that's an E flat. Brain? That is a C. What am I talking about? Oh. It's a C flat. You know, it's not like I wrote it. Or anything. All right, so we have this C flat major now, because I love string players. Um, so I've got the C flat major, dee -dee 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 -dee, and then I instantly go back into sharps with this N harmonic F sharp. Now I may come back here. Um. And rewrite this enharmonically. Oops. To not kill people. <laughs> um, especially since I do rewrite things into naturals and sharps in the second half of the measure. So maybe going into B major out of D flat. Um, let's do a little more writing before I go through that trouble. You know what, just kidding. Whoa! There. Now, they won't sh shoot me as much. Um, that means that we're going to drop down here and change this to F sharp. Um, and we can go ahead. I know I've got like G flat with the D flat over top of it. And then we're going to C flat, but we're and harmonically writing it as B. I'm not going to go that far. I'm just, we're just going to, it's anharmonic. Something's got to give here. So, that's what we're going to give. Um, so, there's this line here in the red. Do, 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 do. It's kind of giving preview a little bit to the rhythmic motive that's going to be here. Um, not completely, but something. Oh, I just realized that I don't know where my phone is. It's over there. <clears throat> because what would I do without this? Also, I want to put it on vibrate. And make sure that the Facebook post posted. And maybe check my email I'm here. And yeah, it did. Okay, back to this. So then I've got these half notes here, which I'm gonna put in the cello. Um and the viola, I think, here. Even though I do have, like, all this other motivic stuff that I could do. Um, ooh, I did just see that I need to actually do this. There we go. 
That'll make this easier for the violas to jump down for this half note that I'm about to give them. So we have D, B, A flat, B flat, B natural, B natural, C sharp to D. And in the viola, we're going to get F, E flat, D flat, D flat, E flat, E natural, E natural. Then we'll do E natural. You know what I have to do? Make that F natural. And make this B flat. And let's go ahead and just do that. That'll make Yeah, um Question is, I th What am I going to give violin to? So I have them going up to this note, which means that I probably should give them this line. Uh, yet. D, C sharp, B, A sharp, C sharp, D, E, E, D, 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 F sharp, G. So we now have This is a D flat. Is it not? There we go. Knew something was wrong there. I also think that this is too fast. We're going to do 120. Did I set this to actually read that tempo? I didn't. There we go. Um, so I'm going to give brass this do, 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 rhythm. I was going to give it to woodwinds. Well, I'll still give it to woodwinds, but I think the brass is, the trumpets are going to be the main focus point because I'm going to put them all in unison on it. 
you know what? Let's change these sounds before they bug me too much. Um, so we do want piccolo solo. We want flute solo. Um, I want, so basically I'm going to choose all the solo instrument sounds. Um, for the woodwinds, because woodwinds in the orchestra are very often solo sounds, whereas the brass are generally section sounds. And I can change that as needed with a change instrument, change instrument function here. So uh, I'm just doing the solo sounds here. So I do not want French horn player. I'm going to ban French horn section for now. Um, that's what it is. I've got, now I've got the orchestral trumpet player. Mm, maybe I should actually stick with that. Um, player one to player two. And then I need to go player two here, player three here, trombone player two, orchestral trombone, bass trombone, tuba solo, and everything else is there. I just don't like the player sounds a whole lot, but we'll see what happens once I've got them all put together. And let's just pop that so it's unison. And then we're going to give the horn that red line here. And this needs to be natural before I freak myself out on that one. Do I want to give the horns a high B flat in the first three measures of the piece? Depends on how much I want this to be heard. Uh, let's try it. I thought B flat instead of actually uh, not dotted. Oopsies. Uh, that's right, this also needs to be like, written like this. Does it sound neat? Yes. Will it be a nightmare to tune? Also yes. But we're going to stick with this for now. And... Do that. Thank you. 
You know, I spent a lot of time about making the orchestration, uh, like the instrumentation I was using, accessible. And then the first like 10 minutes, I put a high B flat in the horn. I have a problem. All right, so this needs to be also fortissimo. And this needs to be also fortissimo. Um, but this is going to be forte. Because no one needs to hear your half notes. Oof, ow. All right, um, give me that contra part, and boom, boom. Do I want it down an octave? <laughs> no wonder this has been sounding wrong. Hopefully no one's been yelling at that for a while. Part of that's because of the um, non-root position of some of these. So what we'll do... Boom, bum. No, we'll keep this like that. Okay, and then give those to the trombones and soon. Um, let's see. There are bass clarinets can, that can do that, however... Ah, uh, oh no, this is what I want. There we go. Thank uh... 
I don't think I need the trumpet doubling that. Um. I also don't like that. I don't know where I don't know if I like where this is going yet. Uh, you know, sometimes this takes a couple tries. I've only been at this at like 30 minutes, so it's not that much of a time. Okay, I do need to do this. Um, echo part. Um, Up there. Then I'm going to actually double this line that I put in violin 2 in the clarinet. And I'm going to take this line in from the trumpet and put it into the oboe. And I'm going to just use 9 transpose, down, preserve, plus one, boom. Instant octave doubling. And we're going to window. And the reason I am going back and I kind of I kind of want to go back to the players for the woodwinds. Ooh, not player three. Player two. I actually don't know if differences. Um, except for the oboe, because I really would prefer not to oboe playing. <laughs> but sometimes that just what's it's just how it be. Um, so we'll keep it as so. Because again, that's probably more likely if I've got an English horn part. Um, which the English horn I am going to double the actual horn part, if only because it's in the same register. And it'll make the English horn player feel special. No, it'll make, it'll just be like, all right. I did all that work and forgot to do the dynamic markings for this.
All right, I'm honestly just going to double this. Um, I do need, yeah, this. And we're just going to go straight up um, clarinet one, clarinet two. Oh, how dare you? Up there. Flute one, flute two. And then over one, over two. We're going to do this. Sharp, please. Thank you. Nope, not sharp. Now sharp. Do 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 do. And then put that in the oval part, and it can be doubled by both until we get to the high B, and then we're gonna do that because that is the worst range to tune in. We're going to actually do this, and by this I mean that. Oh, crap. There we go. And by that, I mean we're actually going to do that. I don't know why it's that many octaves away from where I wanted it. Okay, and now I've actually got to fix something because I was when I did originally the strings, I skipped out on some of these notes up here. And now that I have more instruments to work with, um, I'm going to do that. And actually, what I may need to do is some Divisi. Uh, no, I lied. We're not going to do that. All right, so I've got boom, boom, this, then this. So now this actually nope. This do do and then that. Boom. Um That kicks care of that note. Um, now I just need the F sharp that I throw in here. And the actually the bassoon here is gonna take care of that note. Um and the viola, so I don't need that many people on the crunchy note. also have them all that part of it in a pretty high register so it's pretty brilliant it should contrast the lows going d d d d d so i originally had this kind of cluster chord here with the a not cluster chord but i just had this inserted a and i think i'm gonna forgo that and just go with the unison g's like I did here. But this time I'm gonna stick to the brass, low brass, and give them this motive. 
I'm going to do the lower part right now, even though I'm in trombone one, just because I can actually copy and paste that a lot better if I type the right thing in. Okay, that's okay, that repeats. So this is actually the baseline what I've done. I'm gonna give this to the trombone twos. Um and then I'm gonna paste it into trombone one. However, basically we're going to E. Um, F sharp. There we go. Um, so this just this pattern just keeps going. D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D kind of like a march where you cut off the dot on the long note. Um because composers are lazy and don't write eighth rests. Because why would I? Um, when that is a very stylistic, well-known thing that will save me 30 seconds. Okay. Um, now the interior line here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one again. Difference is going to be that this one is going to go to B. This might not work as I hoped. Okay, so that this only happens. Until there. And at that point, then we have boo do 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 do. Anywho, how do I want, I think I want to give the strings this, 
And then the violas can have that little counter melody here. And by the strings, I mean the violins get the this main tune here. It's not dotted yet. There we go. So I need G. Just, let's just do that right now, um, and then just fix this. All right, so... Nothing like uh, orchestrating it to make you realize how much you're not a fan of it. First, there we go. That's how we do it. Something like that. It still seems a little quick, so I might drop it down to like 116. Maybe 112. Let's try that. What tempo was I at originally? 80. <laughs> no wonder. So now what I may do here is actually get rid of some of these doubled notes and write it as syncopated in that case and not syncopated in that case. Mm 
no. English horn. There we go. something I could double it with that won't mess the texture too much. Um, pizzicato strings. Pizzicato strings, that's what this means. Um, Then Yeah, no, I'm just going to put in regular clarinet down here. I was like, I need to fix this port. Um, I'm doing leftmost measure because that way I always go into what I'm looking for, but um, often I'll do counter setting. makes that slightly better because then the low brass will have something to fit their articulation into um, and help remind them to be liked with the articulation. Um. Will I have to be less than mezzo forte? Definitely. <laughs> uh, that is that is a truth. And that is the T, and yeah, we're going to need to do that here. But we are also going to need to do it down here, even though it's probably got to be mezzo forte in comparison to a bunch of trombones and mezzo piano. Um, we are going to give them mezzo forte. So that we're not just loud. get there somehow. Poor trombone one. I almost feel sorry if I had any soul to be sorry with. But it was kind of a dark turn. Um, I meant that in I had a compassion to I don't know. Anyway, I don't hate trombone players as much as it may look like I'm trying to make them hate me. All right. So we've made it this far <laughs> in about an hour. 
I talked a lot, though. So there's that, which is a lot better than what normally happens um, when I do this, because sometimes I just don't talk for a while. Um, now, at what point does this unfortunate eternity end for the low brass? It will change immediately. Um, so let's actually do that. And this will be where I turn back to Arco. This right there, that, those two eighth notes. Um, so I'm actually going to grab that and put it in the bass and do it now. Before I forget, Arco. Also, I really wish it would not put those markings so high up in the score. Like, do you want the person to be able to read them, or what? Um, cool. Are we in? Oh, okay, let's go back to concert pitch. So then, let's go ahead and put in the trombone 2 part here. That is not trombone two, that is bass trombone. Oops. Trombone two. I keep, because it's in there. I keep marking it, but it's definitely not an accidental, because it's in the key signature, because I smartly made the key G major when I did this. Um, all right, so this bass trombone part, boom, 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 boom. B, G, E, D, 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 G, B, B, C, B, B, A, B, A, ooh, do I really want to do that down there? I don't think I do. I might go to D, have you do G, A, sorry, A, yeah, uh, this, there we go, brain, um, and I'm going to do this measure really quick. And do that. So now I have that third from down here, except it's not going to be in the basement anymore. Um, There we go. Okay. Ooh, starting to get a little bit of water stamped in there. Um, so B, A, A, B, 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 F sharp, ooh, F sharp, F sharp, G, G A B B Yeah, some kind of special. There we go. Let's try that. I have a coaster. Ah, 
So that's a thing. Um, so now I need to figure out what notes I'm actually going to let the cello do. Um, and fix that. Um, probably do this note. And then let's go ahead and mark our arco. So I mostly chose um, the notes that were not doubled in the double bass. Um, well, well, we're not doubled somewhere else in that chord. Um, kind of picking and choosing a little bit. So there's a mm, so I may kind of move some of this around. So I think I'm gonna move this down. Uh, and then otherwise, I think we're good. And then we go back to this nice. Arco. Um, da -da, which means that I then can have the cello play. Da -da 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 -da, and that nice pretty melody that's about to come up here. Um, so now let's fill in the viola part here. So we got our nice G. And then we're going to go to F, B. G, B, A, G, A. D, 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 D. Um, and then, ugh, G, F, G, E. Oops, I was reading along the wrong line just now. Do, 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 do. Bum, bum. There we go. I don't know what I was doing. The English horn. Mustn't forget the English horn. And then I also mustn't forget to give the clarinet the rest of the line. <laughs> and then we go into this next section. where I 
think I'm going to leave out the low brass and just give to the strings. So now that I can easily put this in the strings. Ooh, too, too many. Okay. Uh, I kind of want some woodwinds in on this. Looks like there's, oh, it was just a bug on the screen. It looked like there was a tie there. Um, got ahead of myself. So maybe a one woodwind, maybe a quint, a woodwind quintet kind of deal here. One bassoon. Um, which I don't know why it decided to do that octave when the other octave was perfectly fine. Um, and then Ooh, got ahead of myself somehow. All right, here we go. That's where. Okay. Then the four viola part.
Last line. A lot of work here. Oh, hello. I, sorry. I was so in the zone here. Um, this is actually a piece I've written a little bit of reduction for. And it, it, I am now transcribing it for orchestra. Hence the title of this video. Um, I did not see there. Is the... Okay, yeah. I was about to type, is the audio working? <laughs> um, I got so in the zone of putting in the parts that I hadn't looked up for a while. Um, I've got this one more line here, and then I'm going to basically double it in some woodwinds. Uh, I need that to be eighth notes, please. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to double this in some things. So this, um, I mean, everything I do is kind of like that. Um, where? Okay. Um, but this is just something that I felt like doing. Um, is this going to be too low? No. It is not going to be too low. So I'm actually basically turning this section into a woodwind quintet, um, doubling the strings. Um, now the clarinet player gets to be the equivalent of the viola. The oboe player is going to be the equivalent of the violin too, which does mean I need to do a little bit of um, altering because it will go too low, but I will switch that in a second. I could also put it in English horn and that would fix that issue. However, I'm going to end up putting the violin part up an octave, so it's not going to be a huge deal for the oboe part to be an octave higher. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and play this down here so I can see all the parts moving. All right, so I need to move this down. I originally had this trying to move it a little high, but it just needs to be the same tempo that I wrote it over here, which, yeah, it was 80. So I'm going to play it from the beginning of the section. I never changed the dynamics of the other voices. That's part of the other issue. So they're all going at Fortissimo. <laughs> Which is an issue. Also, I put it in flute two. Why did I put it in flute two? All right, 
So now that that's that. Also, one last thing is I have to bring them up. I'm going to do one more one more thing and that will kind of help this it's because it's set up as a solo sound so it's automatically going to be louder um, change instrument So I'm going to use my blank staff trick um, to change these to be um, solo instruments. It's going to look real funny for a little bit. I'm going to go to score manager, open up flute one. Solo. Close that up. Go to clarinet one. B flat. Then we'll close up the clarinet one. Go to the bassoon. Don't want to do that. Change this to bass clef. I never changed the clarinet sound, just realizing that. So we're going to go ahead and go back and do that. advantage of this is once I do it once, I don't have to do it again. Um, I just have to change it to blank staff and it will automatically choose all these settings again. Wins. Um, sometimes they put the French, I thought they put the French horn in there, but they don't. All right. So now. Um, hello, flute, flute, where are you? The oboe should be that much louder than you.
Now at that point, I'm going to lower the loop, the uh, oboe sound because that shouldn't be happening. Killing me. we go. Um, Soon is missing its name, which I didn't notice. Yeah, I can write pretty stuff. <laughs> it's just um, making sure that the balance is actually correct. Um, so I'm going to actually bring the oboe back a little bit um, now that the flute is playing correctly. I'm still not going to have it at full volume, but sometimes with these solo sounds, they don't actually, and when you change instruments, the dynamics you mark at the beginning of the instrument change sometimes just don't happen right away. It's like they take a measure to do it, and I think that's because that my computer is kind of older and it's an old version of Finale now. And what I probably should do with all of the other solo sounds is bump them up. Because I'm not marking if also if I do this. Uh, technique text. Create. Um this is supposed to automatically bump up. Ooh, no, 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 wrong way. Bump up the volume of the instruments by a certain percentage in finale. But that also means that I need to remember to set on my human playback, which it is on. So. Um, I'm actually going to change it to 21st century. Um, so... If I come into here, into custom, um, so it's going to add a little more rhythm feel, which is it's different than the standard. So it's also going to change the length of eighth and dotted. So basically, these check marks are what's changed. So I'm not adjusting the dotted eighth trip to make it a triplet. Whereas in a standard, they would, it automatically kind of makes it shorter. So, um, I like short syncopations in offbeat, so I'm going to keep that on. I do not want to soften the basis. Detection of solo instrument. Um, so, there's a couple things that get changed. I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning here, and it, because it may change the style that's heard at the beginning.
Hope it's going well, Jacob. And then that should be a fermata. I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, OK, good. <laughs> I'm going to quickly zoom out. It's going to look bad for a second, but I just need to highlight things and do that. And then it got one of them. Great. All right, that's nice. Uh, and then I can do this. Yes, that is exactly true. The eighth note pattern. Part of that is it's actually doubled in these voices, uh, but they're not coming through as much um, in the mix. Um, So what I might do down here, and that might have to do with where they're panned to. Like violin two is panned a little more towards the center, so it gets a little more dulled than the violin one. Um, because this is, I mean, if you're thinking of an actual orchestra, and if 70 is like in the middle, that's where the viola is sit. Um, so if you're listening in headphones, you would get that kind of actual surround. Um, but I will bump up the violin and cello a little bit and i'm also gonna do the bass um and see if that makes a difference um i do need to go in and change that solo horn volume still um solo bassoon volume not 102 yeah that's a great that's a big difference isn't it um, and the solo clarinet volume. Again, you know, just putting them backwards. Okay. So let's see if that makes any difference here. I'm going to just watch the string part because it's the same thing. Let's see if this helps. Um, that's supposed to be there. That's supposed to be there. That in there. Don't remember if I did that. Uh, yeah, I did. Go ahead and also do that in the violin too. That in there. This is supposed to be slurred. I should probably also just that in the cello in both of those eighth note passages. Sorry to be constantly sliding up and down. I'm sure it's great to watch. Mm, and then, yeah. That is also supposed to be slurred. 
That's the one I forgot. No. Okay. Let's try that. Makes any difference. Something about the horn one is not working for me. First, let's change that. Let's make it 127, the max we can do. Because I really want to hear more of it. It's just low. And then I think I do will do is come up into the solo instruments and just do them for a little bit. Can I keep it down the octave? Yes, I can. So I do need to go back at some point and flesh more of that opening segment out. Because right now, um, if we're in Sonata Allegro form, I have this A theme and this B theme in the opening. Well, no, just kidding. This is actually technically the A theme here. And the B theme is coming up. My mistake. I forgot what I did. I have an intro that goes into an A theme. That's what it is. You'd think I'd be able to keep it straight writing it. Um, let's go back to concert pitch to make this easier. Um, so we have, I'm dumb, skipping a whole bunch of measures. I am going to skip out on that low D that you've I've written here because it's the only note. Well, it's not the only note, but it's um, the G is the one I want to double, not the D. Even though I could just add another clarinet voice in here and make it easy, um, I really don't want to. Um, e. C. I may want to look at that again. Um, so right now, that's pretty low. <laughs> I'm putting myself down in low G territory in the horn, but... All right. Let's try that. <laughs> I forgot that I had 
had switched back to regular instruments. I'm going to quickly, uh, quickly fix that. I don't need to do it with Ovo, never mind, because it is already set to the solo one. Okay, and yeah, it'll be fine. So that's the end of the second theme. Okay, I think I might be good to bump the oboe back to its original volume. Maybe. Have fun. Me. I'm going to zoom out and go to the beginning, because I might be done myself. That's a minute and a half of music. Maybe I don't need to extend it. All right, well, I'm going to leave this off here. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, maybe I'll stream when I do this piece again. I may write some more and then come back to this piece. But I figured most of what I do here is marching band, but that's not all I do. Um, I haven't done this specifically in a while with full orchestra. Um, usually I would more likely be doing this with concert band instrumentation, uh, but I really like the sound of string instruments. Um, it's also a lot easier timbre-wise because they all sound really good together, no matter what you do. Um, so. That is that. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I save. And that'll be kind of it. So I'm going over here to the end stream button. And thank you for watching. <laughs>